it's time to uh, reassemble the uh, spindle and I think I found the source of my problem it looks like someone hand ground a chamfer on the small end of the uh, journal and this uh, left a raised edge that uh, damaged the bronze bearing you can see a groove on this uh, photo and uh, I believe this was caused by the uh, raised edge it uh, certainly lines up very nicely with the uh, raised edge that the raised edge wasn't a problem till I did some scraping on the bearing earlier this year uh, before scraping the uh, spindle was only running on this uh, thrust part of the uh, bearing so I uh, scraped a bit off and that moved the uh, journal deeper into the bearing and the uh, raised edge became a uh, problem scraping however also improved the uh, deflection of the spindle a lot and together with some other light scraping I got the spindle uh, running quite smoothly I thought I was winning but um, clearly I was wrong I've been working this uh, journal for maybe 20 minutes now and I can still feel that there is a uh, more drag over here than there is here so this stuff must be really hard I guess uh, it's better to take off a little extra than to leave a high spot I don't expect this uh, end of the bearing to do much anyway not after the uh, damage caused by the uh, by the raised edge this uh, ring that uh, rides up against the rear of the bearing has, uh, has been giving me problems since I started using this lathe I did stone the surface but uh, well somehow the problems never went away so I took a measurement it is not uh, there is a bit of a fixed spot somewhere so I'm going to clean it up on the lathe um, I'm gonna regrind the surface I will probably also uh, clean up this surface on the lathe and then uh, remount it using some glue and that way it won't uh, uh, that way it won't be pushed forward again when I uh, hammer out the taper so this is a total failure um, this just flexes too much and it vibrates and and you can actually feel the vibration in the cable that runs to the uh, to the Dremel tool um, I'm getting a horrible surface finish so I gotta come up with a plan B plan B it's ugly but as long as it works the uh, vibration of the Dremel tool is causing it to move so I gotta crush it a little I guess the grinding left a very poor surface finish and there is still a two or three hundredths of a millimeter thickness difference so now I'm going to work it on the stone and hopefully improve the finish a bit that little grinder was just vibrating too much to be any good I took some measurements and it looks like uh, there is no uneven wear so the brass bearing seems to be uh, worn evenly um, there's also quite a bit of 
uh, copper oxidation here and there was also copper oxidation here so it looks like um, the green stuff the copper oxide uh, was everywhere where the uh, journal wasn't uh, uh, in close contact with the uh, bronze baron so maybe there was some uh, uh, condensation some water in there so now I gotta see if I can get that out without uh, damaging the bearing and then I will put it in the lathe and uh, face this side off so all the uh, so the groove is gone and the uh, all that nasty spot is gone it's only a very slight groove and all the uh, copper oxide is gone because I think the uh, copper oxide is harder than the uh, than the bronze and uh, might damage the uh, hardened uh, steel spindle I'm ready to uh, screw up this bearing once and for all although I did my best to uh, well prevent that from happening um, I first checked the chuck if the facing surfaces are um, in one plane and they were within a hundredth of a millimeter uh, I used a piece of shim stock to prevent damaging the uh, brass and I used a nylon hammer to tap it in place I got myself a brand new bit with a nice radius and uh, well it's time to take a cut the uh, result looks very good although I'm not happy because I measured it with the calipers and there is a difference and I couldn't measure that before with the calipers so I don't get it I even stoned the surface before I put it in the chuck the chuck was within a hundredth of a millimeter and the face of the chuck was within, within a hundredth of a millimeter and now there's maybe well maximum a tenth of a millimeter difference that pisses me off the uh, surface of this bore is uh, pretty rough I was uh, expecting something a bit smoother um, making sure I got the uh, oil hole lined up um, this Loctite is uh, anaerobic uh, curing um, so that means it hardens uh, in a uh, airless environment and it takes about 24 hours to cure I thought about using CA glue but uh, um, that isn't really uh, temperature resistant yeah. it goes in easy enough Now I get to do a little finger painting. This is way too much. I'm using uh, oil paint instead of uh, well engineering blue or whatever it's called Got a line up the rear bearing it feels pretty smooth it is oil paint 
Well, that doesn't look very good. It actually looks better on camera because um, the blue is reflecting inside the bearing. There's only blue on this part, this side of the bearing. And there's only a bit here on the taper. So reseating the um, bearing changed things quite a bit. There's hardly any contact in the rear where I um, um, ground the uh, journal. When I did my scraping earlier this year, I thought I got it pretty good, but uh, well, now it doesn't look very nice. I removed this uh, protection ring. I was worried it might uh, push up against the uh, bronze and uh, disform the uh, bearing. But I don't think that's the case. So there's a definite high spot here and I will now uh, scrape that down a bit. And I thought I found a scraper but it is uh, shit. So I will be using my uh, pocket knife again. I'm not sure if I can do this with the camera in the way. Yeah, I'll switch you off. I had the spindle in and out a few times and uh, I did some light scraping and I'm making progress because there is now contact uh, almost all the way around on the uh, thrust part of the taper. Here it isn't uh, touching but there's hardly any contact on this side of the bearing in the uh, shallow part of the taper. So. I will remove a little more and hopefully the bearing uh, will get pushed a little further inside and uh, there will be a, a bit more contact. Um, I've got good contact on the uh, thrust part of the bearing but um, still on this side there's no paint. So for at least 40% there's no contact. That's quite a lot. Now it wasn't perfect before. This side was also a uh, problem uh, when I scraped the bearings uh, earlier this year. And I'm not sure why it's gotten worse. I think it might be the reseating but it could also be the uh, grinding I did on the uh, spindle journal or maybe it's because of the uh, uh, spindle seizing up and the damage that caused. Not sure. The, um, the bearing was a bit tight on this side. There were a couple of grooves on the outside in this direction. Uh, so I did chamfer the bearing a bit on this side to make it uh, go in easier. So it is possible that uh, the bearing got pushed a little oval. That would explain this. I think I will leave it like this for now. Um, the um, spindle is a bit grooved on the uh, tapered part of the bearing. So if those grooves wear in to this uh, surface it might push the whole spindle uh, in further and uh, there might be more contact area as a result of that. Let's uh, see if I can reassemble this in uh, five minutes. Um, 
there was quite a bit of black rust inside this groove so I had to remove it with uh, some acid because uh, scraping just didn't do it put some grease inside the uh, pulley because uh, the inside rust pretty easy I coated this in some oil because this uh, machine surface was already starting to rust. Maybe a condensation or perhaps there was a, a bit of water in the oil. <laughs> and of course I forget the belt. Oh fuck! <sighs> well, I'm not gonna film that again. All right. The belt is installed, and um, it's now time to uh, adjust the uh, spindle. Um, but first, some oil. <laughs> Um, I'm using some um, ISO 32 hydraulic oil. I try to find some uh, old school oil without uh, detergents and additives, but uh, you need a time machine to get uh, that stuff. The only thing I could find was for uh, old tractors, and that was um, uh, a 30 weight oil and that is about uh, ISO 100 and that's uh, thicker than I would have liked. When setting up the spindle um, I uh, relied on feel and uh, heat so I monitored the heat and if it got too warm I backed off this ring. This time I am going to uh, put a feeler gauge in there and that's uh, a tenth of a millimeter and then uh, lock things up. It feels good. Hopefully it is good. Um, the adjustment of the rear bearing works a little different. Because the rear journal is basically a sleeve that fits over the spindle, um, so you need to move it in or out of the tapered bearing um, to set up the uh, proper clearances. I think I will push it in with this uh, feeler gauge till it starts to bind. Mm. It's already binding. Remove the fuel gauge and then tighten up this one in the rear. And hopefully that'll do the trick. It feels okay. Thank you. 
Not much heat build up after 10 minutes of running, but um, it is really pissing through the oil. It's already gone. It is even dripping on the front side of the headstock, which it never did before. Great. Will it never end? So now you get to see how much I uh, screwed up this time. And then I'll uh, quit this video because it's getting way too long and boring. Well, I certainly haven't improved things, and I think runout was uh, two hundredths of a millimeter before, and now it is at least three hundredths. So that's uh, one hundredth of a millimeter screw up. The end.